Hey guys, what's up? Jado Z back here again, and it has been a minute since I've done one of these top 10 Doki Battle lists. So much so that that 10 isn't going to quite cut it, so we had to make this one a top 20. Now, I see the fact list is just a top 10 list because the first half of this video will be in the description down below. It's already done. If you want to check out the cards that didn't quite make this list, but good enough for the top 20, check that out. And that, of course, the last time I did this was the Blue Vegito. So this is the Super Saiyan 4 and LR Gohan Edition. So let's get into this list, starting at a card on the last list that was 7th overall. And that is the Tech God Lead himself, God Tanks. Now, Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks is very interesting. Uh, you have the versatility of only needing 9 key for Super Attack. That does immense damage. But you, of course, want to get the 11 key Super, which will massively raise your attack for the one turn, and will do immense damage to the enemy. He's still one of the hardest hitters in the entire game. And if you get more than 12 key, well then he's just a wall breaker. Uh, so you get that versatility there, which in theory would be good against, which is only really good against the Fizz Brawly mission, or the Brawly mission in general, the STR one needs the wall breaking too. But usually, 11 key is the way to go. Uh, his passive is 120% up on his attack. We need a super attacks which is still one of the har the biggest attack raises in the game. Uh, his link skills is over in a flash, fierce battle, and fuse fighter are his main links. So, a very strong card, that's his only real gimmick, that's why he's up here at number 10. So now let's go to number 9, he used to be number 6 in the Super Vegito, the Blue Vegito side of Doken. He's the STR God Lead himself, Omega Shunner, and he's my boy. He was my first God Lead I ever pulled, and he's still chilling on my STR team. I uh, STR key plus 3 in attack, d defense, and HP plus 70% up. His super attack does immense damage and greatly lowers defense, so he's a very hard hitter and he's a wall breaker. Uh, he does pa his passive skill is attack plus 80%, so he's even stronger. And all enemies attack minus 30%. Which, from the naked eye, does kind of look underwhelming, I will agree with that. But, if you think about it this way, it's a constant Icarus. You know how many times you use Icaruses to save your butt? Well, that's what Omega Sharon does every time he cycles through your team. So he makes your whole squad a tank when he's up there. Uh, his Link skills are Shocking Speed, GT, uh, Fierce Battle, and his Big Bad Bosses, which is one of the strongest Links in the game, plus 25% attack and defense when he's under 80%. So extremely strong and he has good links overall so where he's better than god tanks is he's a more versatile unit he has attack and defense so that's why he's number nine so now let's look at the card that was fourth overall on my last list and that is rose super saying rose goku black he is the villain or extreme type leader. Extreme type key plus three and all your stats up by 50%. He does immense damage and does greatly lower their defense. His passive is a straight up own attack plus 100%. Straight up. Really cool. His and key plus three for extreme types. Now, this is under question if in global, if you'll still get that key plus three for extreme types because uh, normal Goku Black got that in global apparently. Uh, I think he still will, but this is mostly a JP list, we'll say that that's what he has. Uh, his link skills, he has Fear and Faith, Prepared for Battle, and another big bad boss's unit. So, very very strong, uh, he's, uh, he gives the key, so on his passive, that's, that's what makes him better from Gotenks, even though Gotenks will hit a little bit harder, but this is why I really like Super Saiyan Blue. Goku, and this is more of an individual thing, I'm not going to take their teams too much into account, this is individual cards, how good are they? So now, moving down the list, we got the Intelligent God Lead himself, he was, I believe, 5th on my last list, and that is Buhan, uh, Super Boo Gohan Absorbed, uh, his super attacks are cool, uh, he has a farmable super attack, which gives him uh, nice, this is why he's farther on the list. I know, I think I shafted him a little bit. I think I had uh, Rose ahead of him on my last list. But, now we have Buhan. We have a farmable super attack. Um, when he is SA-10, you have a 30% chance to do Super Heroes Kanakazi attack, which is a huge attack boost. It does immense damage, and does greatly lower attack and defense. So if you get that, I think that's the best super attack in the entire game. Uh, the, the debuffing isn't crazy. Uh, but if you don't get that, like most of the time you won't, you'll just do Vice sh Shout, 
but still does immense damage and normally lowers attack and defense. His passes, he's a, he's, he is of course a nuker. For every key sphere obtained, attack plus 12% and you recover 3000 HP. Uh, so really good. His links, uh, you have fierce battles, shocking speed, big bad bosses, and metamorphosis. So you get even more healing with Boo, Buhan. So the reason why Buhan is ranked higher than him last time, because by himself, he can carry your team. You really see how good these individual cards are in Dokken Battlefield when you only get one or two good cards in, into your fight and you see the cards that can really carry you and Buhan is one of those guys that will carry your team. So Buhan is a tremendous, tremendous card. Now let's look at a guy that fought Buhan in the series and that is Super Vegito. So Super Vegito is still the debatably the best overall card in the game. He does everything. There's no other cards that do more things than him. There are a, there is still a decent case for him to make it in the top three. Uh, the reason I have him here, uh, there's a better leader skill for agility card. He's just, of course the OG uh, agility god leader. A key plus three and all your stats plus 70%. He does immense damage and he raises your allies attack 30% for the one turn. So he hits really hard and he buffs everybody else. That's tremendous. His passive reduced damage received on normal attacks by 80% and you counter with tremendous damage. He's a tank, he'll hit extremely hard and boost everybody else. He's the perfect combination of everything you really want in a card and he's still one of the best cards overall in Dokken Battle. And agility cards get the free uh, plus 5 to double attack so the dupe system makes him even better as you can do double super attacks which double raises all your allies attacks so it's a 60% boost for all your allies so it's just crazy. Uh, he has prepare for battle, shocking speed, fuse fighter and fierce battle are his main links. So very solid card overall there's not a weak spot in this card with his tanking you might need a sealer to really get it to go off but uh, it's still really good and you might get supered once in a turn so if he's taking three or four attacks you can still really count on the fact that at least the majority will be basic attacks you might just take one super it's not that big of a deal so now on to the top five this guy was number one last time de-ranked to the top five that is blue Vegito. now i know meech the guy that i always like to talk about didogan battle he always is trying to say that I've ranked Blue Vegito higher than Super Vegito, and that's crazy. He would probably rank Blue Vegito a lot higher, a lot lower on the list for everyone to say out of the top five. But he's really hard to place just because he is R and Jesus in flesh. He is. Let's talk about his leader skill. It's all super or hero type key plus three and all your stats plus fifty percent. He does immense damage with his attack, and of course, his passive is kind of like Super Vegito's. Uh, damage from normal attacks reduced by 30% only, so he's a decent tank, but not really enough, and counters them with tremendous damage, so just like the countering for Super Vegito, he has ultra high chance to launch two additional attacks, high chance those attacks will be super attacks, so he has the ability to do three supers, uh, I think most of the time you get two, and another additional, that's usually how about it works, uh, so you can count on two, that's probably what the average is out to be. Uh, but this is where you can get screwed, because you have the chance to only get one super attack. You have the chance to be in a situation where you don't want him to block, because he only has a 30% damage reduction. So uh, he's not your best tank, probably, but he's still the best card. Now, why do I have him so high? Because he's the best card in the whole game for the awful story mode that Dokken has. If you're going to be grinding through the story for your... Uh, Dragon Stones, or for levels, or you just started the game, you need a card to help you out, you want to have a friend to give you a Blue Vegito, he'll mop through every event in the story mode by himself, he'll counter everybody, he'll get you those double supers, he'll do those extra, his normal attacks, his additionals, but are strong enough to kill most people in the game. So, this is why I have Blue Vegito so high, and he has the best uh, Link set in the game as well. Over and Flash, prepare for battle. Uh, fierce Battle and Fuse Fighter, and you also have Kamehameha and Super Saiyan going in there as well. So now, 
We're into the new godly territories. You know, this is a, the new card uh, that's out. The newest card as of making this list, and that is the new physical cooler. Uh, he is the new type of god lead, which is physical plus three keef to a physical extreme types, so villains and all their stats plus 120%. And for the heroes, he plus one, HP attack and defense plus 50%. He does immense damage and great lower defense, which is what most every villain does. Uh, he is passive, attack and defense plus 100%. You get guaranteed additional and medium transfer to be a super attack. So it's kind of like a, kind of like a bad version of Blue Vegito's uh, second double attack passive or yeah passive. Uh, what makes him so good of him is of course that leader skill. That buff is insane, 120% up for all those villains. You're talking physical brawl, you got Goku Black, you have uh, full power freeze. There's a lot of good uh, extreme type villains. His passive attack and defense plus 100%, he's going to be hitting really hard and be one of the best consistent tanks in the game. His links are the reason he's just number 4 though. He has shocking speed, and that's his only real key link. He has metamorphosis, which is cool, although that, I don't know why, he's not really a healer. Boo and uh, Cell are the main healers. He, um, I, I know a lot of these uh, alien uh, Doken guys get metamorphosis, but you're throwing one of those things out for fear and faith, and all of a sudden you could make an argument for him being the top three. But since he uh, doesn't have that, he moves him out. But he does have big bad bosses, which if that's activated, all of a sudden he's a 125% attack and defense, which gives him a bigger buff than Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. And you could have him centering two people, and that's 150% to attack and defense, so it'll match Super Saiyan 4 Goku's attack buff. So it's really crazy type of potential damage and defense you can get from this guy, but it takes having people around him to do that, and his links don't help him enough to push him into the top three. So now, let's look at a guy that is in the top three, another new card in Doken Battle, Super Saiyan. Four, Goku. Super Saiyan 4 Goku. P plus 3 to hero strength cards and all your stats plus 120% and P plus 1 and 50% for the strength villains. He does immense damage and greatly and uh, raises his defense by 30% for 6 turns. His passive 150% attack up and medium chance to nullify and counter super attacks with ultra tremendous damage. So why is he so good if you didn't know he is the second hardest hitter in the game he raises his defense 30 percent for that for those turns we have to super attack for to get it off that's why he's only number three uh, so his tankiness isn't as good but he's still probably like a top five tank in the game well if you take out passives just pure stat based tanks uh, He's still one of the hardest hitters in this game, and his links, prepare for battle, shocking speed, and GT are really good key links. He has um, Saiyan Roar, which is a 25% attack up, so if you have a link with the Super Saiyan 3 Goku, that's an even more attack. So, this is why he's he's one of the strongest cards in the game, but he has one of the best leader skills in the game. There's no way to really go wrong, but he's only really an offensive unit. He gets a little defensive buff with when he does super, but and he can counter super attack, which is really nice as well. There's one thing that Cooler doesn't have, which you would think he could, because he did fly through a Kamehameha in the movie. But anyways, let's get to number two, and that is probably my cool, one of my favorite cards that came out. That's my favorite character of all time in DBZ, and that's Super Saiyan 2 LR Gohan. Int. He plus 3 attack and defense, all his stats plus 90%. Why isn't he number 1? Well, he doesn't get the defense, but he's still very defensive. Uh, he has super attack, when you get 18 plus key, it's a father-son Kamehameha, which is really easy to get because his passive skill uh, is key plus 1 for every key obtained. So if you get int key, you get 3 key. If it's any other key, it'll be 2. Very, very good. And his passive also gives attack plus 18%. For every key obtained, so he's a nuker that can easily get extra key. He is tremendous. There's a really strong case for him to be the number one card in the game. 
a reason. He's not number one because he doesn't get the defense as much, but his defense is still extremely high because his base stats are so high. He has the highest base stats in the game. 15,000 base HP, about 17,000 base attack, and almost 9,000 base defense. You do a double leader for him, that's about 80, 180% up, so he'll be blocking very well. Uh, his links, he has prepared for battle shocking speed. Uh, the Gaze of Respect, which is the Piccolo link, which he'll link with LR Piccolo then. <clears throat> and the Legendary Power, which is another, which is the LR link, which I believe is like 3,000 attack or something like that. Uh, so, he's a strong start in the game. He can hit for over 3 million. It's insane. But the thing that... Uh, Goku can one-shot almost everybody in the game. And Gohan's almost twice as strong as Goku with enough ki. But if Goku can already one-shot him, then, then what's the point of having extra damage with Gohan? Well, for future bosses, they're just going to get stronger, so eventually Goku will have a harder time killing those bosses. But uh, Gohan is so good. His offense uh, usage alone could make him a number one card, and his leader skill not siding with any hero or villains type. It's straight up all intelligent types get the key and stat buff. So it's really good, a really strong case for a number one spot. So if you think he should be number one, I want you guys to comment it down below. Otherwise, right, let's look at the card that did get the number one spot, and that is of course the Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. All hero agility types, key plus three, and all your stats up plus 120%. Uh, villain types plus one, and, and all your stats up plus 50%. Uh, he does immense damage and greatly lowers defense. His passive attack and defense plus 120% and a medium chance to nullify supers and counter with a super attack. So, what? Why is he so much better? Well, his attack is lower than Goku and LR Gohan, but it's still one of the hardest hitters in the game. He, can, he flirts with a million damage. His tankiness is what puts him up here. He's the best consistent tank in the game. He doesn't need... He doesn't need any type of ceiling to make sure he gets the, the defense buff. He doesn't need anybody out there to help him. He's just straight up 120%. He doesn't need a super first. It's just straight up 120%. And that makes him just he tank everything so much better. It's pretty much like he's uh, Omega Shenron as far as his own tanking ability. And he'll hit extremely hard. And it makes his passive of being able to counter supers more viable. Because you can let him, uh, if he gets hit by a super, it still won't hurt him that much. So, it's like, oh no, he did get it off, but, oh no, it did 30,000 damage, which is nothing when you have that much health with his, thanks to his leader skill. And you look at his links, it's just like uh, Super Saiyan 4 Goku, shocking speed, prepare for battle, and GT, and he has Saiyan Roar. I mean, there's not really a card that really helps him with Saiyan Roar on his agility team, <clears throat> but Heroes team, you'd have Goku. Um, so, so, Vegeta is the most balanced card attack and defensively, which is extremely nice. He doesn't do much other for the, his squad, but an individual card, as far as being able to tank and do the damage, it's right there. This is Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. This is what makes him the best card in the game at the moment. Now, of course, this is just as of the, the most current banner that just came out is the cooler banner. So... I'm guessing this will be changing shortly, but if you guys want to stay tuned for the next time I'll do these, I'll do these at this, do this style of video for every three to four months, because that's about when enough new cards are out for this list to actually make sense to do another one. But otherwise, this is it. I want you guys to comment down below what cards you think should be in the top ten. Did I miss any? What order? What order should be changed? Comment your or top ten list in the comment section down below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time. Stay tuned for no more Dokken Battle videos. See ya.